Shalom, this is Gideon Ariel of Root Source uh, with a special lesson regarding an upcoming uh, holiday uh, called Tisha B'Av. Uh, this year, the holiday of Tisha B'Av will be held, will be observed on Sunday the 14th of August. And uh, I've been asked by a few students to uh, create a uh, a, a lesson about Tisha Av, and uh, at the end of this lesson, we'll also have a, a special um, a call uh, for uh, for prayer. So please stay on till the end of the lesson. And also together with me is uh, my student and friend Brit Ahuva Lode from Norway. Hello, Ahuva. Hello, Gidon. So uh, we are going to do this uh, uh, lesson. In a, in a question and answer method. Yes, I am curious. Um, Tisha B'Av, that is Hebrew. I don't understand so much. Uh, so what is really Tisha B'Av? Thank you very much. Okay, first of all, literally the word, the, the, the phrase Tisha B'Av means the ninth in Av, the ninth day in the month of Av. Tisha means nine. And uh, the and Av is the Nisan, Nisan, Iyar, Sivan, Tammuz, Av, the fifth month in the biblical year that start that starts in uh, in Nisan, the the month of spring. But uh, for various reasons, uh, the civil uh, uh, biblical year starts in Tishrei and ends in Elul, and the the eleventh month is Av. I'll just, uh, so that is the meaning of the word Tish Ab'av. And the uh, significance of Tish Ab'av is, is uh, very wide. It is uh, because this is the day of calamity for the Jewish people. Now, for a, a people who uh, that is uh, very historic, very old, with a lot of calamities. There, uh, uh, um, you know, we don't have to do a, uh, uh, a, a, a calamity Olympics, but I think that the, everyone will agree that the, the Jewish people has survived through much uh, tragedy and terror throughout its two to four thousand year old long history. Uh, as it's written in the Bible and in post-biblical uh, historical uh, uh, documentation, the Jewish people have somehow decided, not, not, not only as we'll see, just uh, the Jewish people, that all of these tragedies we will pack into this one single day in the year as a memorial day, for all of these tragedies. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't have other memorial days throughout the year, but all of the but the most tragic day in the Jewish calendar by far is uh, Tish Abav, the ninth day of the month of Av. Uh, the uh, I, I just off the top of my head, I will definitely say that the the uh, the two most tragic events that occurred on this day of Tisha B'Av in Jewish history were the destruction of the first and the second temples, both temples. The temple that was, that was built by uh, King Solomon and stood for about 420 years. And the temple that was built uh, in, in, in the time of Ezra and Nehemiah uh, that stood for about 300, 430 years and, and towards the end of its establishment was rebuilt to be uh, possibly to be one of the most one, wonderful uh, stupendous structures uh, in, in, in world history by King Herod of all people. Uh, it was destroyed soon thereafter in the year 70 AD and uh, both of these destru the destructions occurred on the day of 9th of Av. And uh, so that, that is uh, more than just a coincidence for people of faith. And it all happened when the first event of tragedy happened on Tisha B'Av. This is the story of the spies. You might be familiar 
with the story of the spies as is uh, recorded in the book of numbers sorry i don't have the uh i don't have the chapter on the tip of my fingers but uh, moses sent spies from the desert into the land of canaan into the land that would ultimately be the land of israel and uh, told them go check out the land because that is the land that god is giving us and we are going to go into that land but uh, we want to first check it out a little bit they, he said 12 12 spies one spy from each of the tribes and these were not just you know just uh, some low uh, low level spy each of them was was the president, was one of the princes, one of the leaders of, the, uh, of each tribe. And all 12 tribes went through the land and came back. And all of them, as one, gave a negative review of the land of Israel. I say all of them as one, save two spies. They were Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of uh, Yefuneh maybe Jephunneh in English. So these two uh, spies ended up being the leaders of Israel, especially Joshua, who ended up taking over the mantle of leadership from Moses. And Caleb was his uh, sidekick. These were the only two people who were allowed into the land of Israel from the generation of the desert because the entire generation was wiped out within those 40 years. You remember the Jewish people were in the desert, the children of Israel were in the desert for 40 years? They were in the desert for 40 years because God decreed that they would because of this sin of the spies. Had it not been for the spies, they would have gone into the, into, into the land of Israel within a couple of weeks. But God decreed, no, for, for 40 years since, you, since all of the people heard this uh, um, report from the spies and accepted it and said, how can we go into the land of Israel? This land, the land of Canaan, we don't want to do it. It's terrible. We're going to cry all night. So God told them, you're crying for no reason. Don't you understand that this is the, the most tremendous gift that I have for you? You're leaving the land of Egypt, the land of, uh, that you were uh, enslaved in. Now you are going to be my slaves. You're going to be my servants. You're going to be one with God in the land of God that I've promised to your forefathers. And you are despising that land. And you're crying about it. You're crying for no good reason. I'm going to give you what to cry for. And for 40 years, they, they uh, sojourned in the desert. And that entire generation, as it's written in the Bible, was uh, decimated. And the only people from that generation that, went, that came into the land of Israel, according to Jewish tradition, were Joshua and Caleb. And, uh, which, of course, is a, a very important aspect. But mostly we're talking about th this aspect of of, of tragedy for the Jewish people, that, that, that the, uh, the Jewish people's love story with the land of Israel was marred by this event, by this episode. <laughs> that's, that's a small world, small word, but uh, and it ended up being the um, archetype of, of tragedy for the Jewish people. And, and, and I just mentioned, again, the destruction of the temples. And World War I was also uh, started on Tisha B'Av. It comes out around J July, August every year. And, uh, and, th and throughout the generations, so many uh, pogroms, uh, so many wars against the Jewish people, there, there were burnings of Jewish holy books, Bibles, Talmuds, all, all, throughout, uh, all throughout the Jewish people's history. So what we do, even though it is not mentioned as a fast day in the Bible, in the, in the five books of Moses, as a commandment, the Jewish people has accepted upon itself um, comprehensively all over the world and all Jewish communities to fast as a, uh, an observance of this day to, uh, to try to remember the pain by, by, by fasting. We are, we are um, giving ourselves a little pain, making things uncomfortable for us. And uh, through that personal pain, we are connecting more to the national pain, 
which uh, we hope to uh, fix uh, very soon, speedily in our days when the uh, redemption will come. Did I answer your question? Uh, <laughs> yes, no. you answered my question and more than that. Have you so, had other thank questions? Thank you so much. It was about the temple and the spies and also a lot of other events. Exactly. Yeah. So, and you mentioned that you're fasting on that day. Yes. Yes. Uh, and uh, could, you, could you tell a little bit about the fasting? Uh, is it something special with the fasting on Tisha B'Av? Is it different from the other fast day or is it similar? And do you do something special on Tisha B'Av uh, uh, about the fasting? Yes, so uh, the idea of fasting isn't even mentioned really in the Bible with that word. Uh, the well-known fast day of the Jewish people is, um, is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. The, the Bible says you shall afflict your souls. So, the, so that is not, that's not something very clear. So according to the oral tradition, that means to not eat. You're afflicting your soul, your, your body, and by not eating and not drinking. So there are five things that you do not do on Yom Kippur as well as on uh, Tisha B'Av that we're talking about. They are, like I said, eating and drinking. There I am, eating, drinking. You can't wear leather shoes that entire day for 24 hours from, you know, the Jewish day starts the night before. So for 24 hours, you don't eat, you don't drink, you don't uh, wear leather shoes, um, you don't uh, apply uh, salves or oils to yourselves. That's not done so much anyway nowadays, at least uh, us men. Whatever. And uh, you don't have uh, marital relations. So you're, you're on, on Yom Kippur, on the Day of uh, Atonement, we... Uh, afflict our souls in these five fashions in order to raise our souls to be more like sinless angels. On Tisha B'Av, we afflict our souls. We, f we say, what is the, the archetypical affliction of soul? What we do on, on, uh, on Yom Kippur. So we do the same thing, but not in order to be more, more like angels but to afflict our souls and to remember the tragedies that we have done, that, that, that have befallen us throughout history, and to pray to God that he will accept our recognition of, this, of these problems and accept our um, f uh, uh, requests for forgiveness, that we are, that we are uh, doing tshuva, that we are repenting, or accept our repentance. Um, and in fact, Yom Kippur, I'm sorry, Tisha B'Av is connected to the holidays and the, uh, the season of repentance because soon after Yom Kippur comes Elul, the, the last month of the year, which throughout that entire month we uh, say special repentance prayers. I won't go into it so much now. Followed immediately by Rosh Hashanah. In the Bible, that is called the, the Day of Trumpets and the Day of Remembrance. And uh, uh, according to Jewish tradition, that is the day, uh, it's the first day of the year. We're, we're happy that uh, we have a new year, but we're also re spent the entire uh, month or, or week or two beforehand trying to repent for all of the sins of the year and to start on a new slate. And then we have the 10 days of repentance following, or including Rosh Hashanah, the first 10 days of that first month of the year of Tishrei, concluding with Yom Kippur, which is a, a, a very holy and somber day where we uh, uh, all day long are in the synagogue praying and requesting forgiveness from God. On Tisha B'Av, we also spend a lot of time in the synagogue. We are not uh, required, like on Shabbat or Yom Kippur or, on, or other holidays, to uh, refrain from certain acts like uh, turning on a light or driving in a car you know you can't uh, Jews don't do that kind of, that and many other things 
uh, or cooking on, on Shabbat and on Yom Kippur. On Tisha B'Av, you're allowed to do anything like that, uh, but it is certainly most of the morning is spent in the synagogue saying the uh, special prayers that have been, a, that have been written over the, the generations, thousands of years, uh, about Tisha B'Av. And I once, uh, and I don't remember uh, who uh, came up with this, this interesting idea. There are two days that we fast. Uh, there's an asterisk there. I'll get back to it in a second. The, the two major days that we fast are Yom Kippur and Tisha B'Av. So we say that uh, on Yom Kippur, you're... Uh, too busy, I don't remember this, but I'll, so I'll make something up. On Yom Kippur, you're too busy praying in order to think about food. And on Tisha B'Av, you're too sad in order to think about food. The idea of, of, of connecting to a national and really a universal um, uh, sadness I say universal because, of course, the, the, the Jewish people are so much part of the history of the world. And I think that anybody who, who sees today's current events can, can appreciate that. Um, and, and, and that is really, I think, what is, a connect, what, what is so important in so many aspects of uh, Jewish uh, ritual. It's to connect the individual to the national and the universal in, in almost everything. That's, that's for a, a different lesson. Um, I gave you an asterisk about the two, uh, the, the two fast days. We actually have another four fast days throughout the year. Uh, I won't go into them very, quick, uh, very deeply at all now, just very quickly. They are Shiva Asar Tammuz, the 17th day of the month of Tammuz. Asarab Tevet, the 10th day of the month of Tevet. Tzom Gedalia, which, is, which comes out on the third day of, Nis, of Tishrei, just after Rosh Hashanah, just after the holiday of the Feast of Trumpets, and the fe Feast of Esther, the Fast of Esther, excuse me, which is, which is observed the day before Purim. All except for, for the Fast of Esther, all four of those, plus Tisha B'Av, all of them have to do with the destruction of the Temple. So for four days, really, we're fasting in, uh, in commemoration and observance of, uh, of the temple and the commonwealth, the Jewish commonwealth that we lost in, uh, in the destruction of the first temple and ultimately in the second temple also. Uh, I, I'm looking at myself in the, uh, in the video right now and, and I'm growing a little bit of a beard because growing a beard is a symbol also of mourning. People who... Uh, um, God forbid, uh, lose a, lose a, a, a loved one. Will uh, men will will refrain from shaving, certainly for seven days, mostly for thirty days, and often even more so until uh, as a symbol of uh, of mourning. So during these three weeks of of uh, of um, not fasting, but of of, of thinking about uh, the the tragedy of the destruction of the temples, we have certain mourning uh, uh, observances, including not uh, shaving. Uh, so towards the end of these three weeks, we don't eat meat. Uh, we don't launder uh, certain clothes. We don't go to movies. We don't listen to music. It's, it's a very somber period. And all of these are, are rituals that we observe in order to get our souls closer to the feelings of how we're supposed to feel. This is, this is an important idea. Within Judaism, we uh, act and uh, according to our actions, thus come our, our feelings and our beliefs. Okay, so did I get that question right? Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much, Gideon. It was uh, it gave me a lot of uh, new thoughts and uh, insight into the Jewish morning. Um, but I also have a um, last question. If I want to stand together with the Jewish people on Tisha B'Av and be fasting together with you, so um, first of all, when do the fasting start in the 
day and when does it finish. And also this year it's uh, on Shabbat, Tisha B'Av. So how are you going to deal with that? Yes, thank you very much for your question. It, it really, uh, I got emotional when I hear you and, uh, and others of our uh, Christian friends saying, I want to stand uh, uh, in solidarity with uh, my Jewish brothers and fast on the, uh, on the fast day of, uh, of Tisha B'Av. Um, in general, the, the ninth day of the month of Av, as I said, is uh, observed from the evening before, like uh, most every uh, Jewish um, observance. And or ordinarily, most people, uh, the, the tradition is that you have a, a uh, what we call a su'udam of seket, a, a, a dividing meal, your last meal. And you, uh, <laughs> you might know what that sounds like. You know, if somebody's on death row, they have a last meal also. So, uh, and, and, and of course, uh, I think also my, my, the, the, uh, the, the Christians amongst the people who are watching this, and I'm not a Christian, but I, I, I'm familiar, that, that, uh, that Jesus' last, he had a last meal with his, with his, um, with his uh, apostles. Uh, of course, that was not on Tisha B'Av, that was uh, Leila Seder of Passover, but we won't go into that. But the idea of a last, a last meal is, is very somber. So the, the last meal that we have on Tisha B'Av, it, or the day before Tisha B'Av, we take a little bit of bread and an egg, which, uh, which uh, symbolizes simplic- uh, of hard-boiled egg, symbolizes simplicity of... Uh, of um, of food, and we burn a piece of paper or something until we have ashes. We eat a little bit of ashes together with, with the bread and with the egg, and you sit mm-hmm. separately. There's a there's a a, 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 a law that um, when you sit more than three people together, you you uh, it, it, give, it it adds a, a higher level of um, a higher level of a, of of ritual to the to the uh, meal so we don't want to have that higher level uh on this last meal before tisha b'av so you're you uh, uh you're commanded not to sit together so you sit less than three people at a time so that you don't you don't have that added uh, uh specialness and that uh uh meal that last meal is held shortly before sundown Obviously, a sundown is uh, different in every uh, in every place in the world. Here in Israel, it's actually different by a few minutes in different cities. I think we're talking about something like uh, 7:30, I think, and uh, um, and, uh, and and this fat. Uh, so you stop eating a little bit before. You don't want to, by mistake, get up to the line. You leave yourself mm-hmm. a margin of error. And then we fast until sun, until uh, uh, after sunset, way after sunset. It's, it's a thing called Tzeta uh, Kochavim, which is about seven, I think it's something like uh, uh, a half an hour after sunset in uh, 40 minutes, something like that. Till the three stars? Till the th- yeah, three stars, a little bit before. You should look up on Google uh, what time does Tisha B'Av end this year in your uh, in your city uh, to get things. Now, now I'm not I'm not um, really suggesting that people uh, do the entire nine yards. It's it's not easy. I, I guess I know that there are some people that fast frequently, so to have one more day of fasting, it's not too not too scary. Uh, um, so it's 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 a touching. Um, uh, idea that you want to share with the, the Jewish people, um, and, and and you know I fe- I personally feel as a, as a Jew, uh, as an observant Jew, I, I feel committed and uh, to to, uh, to follow the the laws as best that I can. I, I find that it's uh, very touching that people would 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 uh, want to volunteer to uh, to do that. I I. I I guess people do it all the time, but uh, 
we Jews are so used to things that we have to do, then, then we, uh, which are great things to do, so that we're, we're a lot less on the volunteer side of, of uh, rituals and stuff like that. We, we've got plenty of things that we got to do, so we don't, uh, we don't uh, look around for more things that we have to do. But um, I, I call, in spite of all this, I call upon viewers here and uh, Christians and friends of Israel around the world to uh, uh, review this lesson, to, to look uh, more deeply uh, on the internet uh, for information. You can, you can ask me uh, on rootairsource.com. Root uh, if you're seeing this video underneath here, there's room for comments. Uh, ask me your questions and uh, uh, your, uh, this gesture of, of uh, standing in solidarity with your Jewish brothers and sisters in this difficult time for the Jewish people. Uh, there's tragedy in Israel, there's tragedy uh, around the Jewish world. There's terror and tragedy all over the world. I think that God is really calling upon us to to wake up and try to find out what we're doing wrong, not to look at the other person. You know, they say when you, when you point at somebody, you're pointing one finger at them, but you're pointing three fingers at yourself. And so we have to look inside ourselves to try to find out where can we be better? How can we behave better with our fellow man? How can we uh, re react better to our children, to our spouses, uh, just to be better people? I think that that is what God mostly wants that we that we be good people and uh, I, I'm sure the people who are watching this video are are starting out at a very nice high level of, of goodness and you're you're aiming to get higher so on this uh, on, uh, to, uh, to summarize this uh, lesson about uh, Can I have just one, yeah, one more question one more. Yeah, because, because the the problem is the Shabbat this year I forgot that thank the you for, yes thank you for reminding me thank you beautiful that's <laughs> Yes, um, the, the law is that Shabbat is a happy time. And so even though we are uh, observing uh, rituals of uh, mourning uh, throughout these three weeks, and especially on the fast day of Tisha B'Av, we, uh, we are commanded not to mourn on Shabbat. When Shabbat comes around, it's as if the world stopped. And all we have is the connection with Shabbat, with Hashem, with God. Um, so when we, uh, tr w so even though the ninth day of Tisha, the ninth day of the month of Av, falls out this year on a Shabbat, it is deferred to Sunday, and on Shabbat itself we do not um, fast. We don't, don't eat that uh, Sudam of Seket that I mentioned before. I spent so much time explaining about it. No. Until sunset on Saturday, on Shabbat, it is Shabbat. No um, morning at all. Uh, so th so uh, no, no uh, last meal. As the, as the sages say, you can have a meal that is like the... Uh, most fabulous, uh, sumptuous uh, dinner that King Solomon had in his day with meat and with wine, even though we refrain from meat and wine during the last uh, week before Tisha B'Av. On Shabbat, we, uh, we will not have any uh, uh, re reminders of the tragedy of the morning at all. And... Uh, we just start immediately, no earlier than uh, total nighttime on Saturday night, the eve of the Sunday. So again, I, I might not have all of the rituals down pat, and I'll be happy to uh, get more questions from you, and maybe I'll have another uh, uh, lesson for you ready next week. Um, but uh, for now, let us uh, conclude with a prayer that may the, uh, the tragedies of uh, of the fast uh, that we observe in, memoria, in, in commemoration of them throughout the generations and throughout the history of the Jewish people and the world, may they be turned into holidays. This is really actually the famous um, prophecy of uh, Zechariah. I think it's Zechariah 12, where uh, Zechariah was the 
was the um, prophet, one of the prophets, at the beginning of the second temple. And people asked him, here, we're building the temple again. Maybe we can uh, stop uh, fasting. And he said, one day it will be that we will, all of these fasts, especially Tisha B'Av, will be turned into days of holiday and gladness and happiness. May we uh, conclude this lesson uh, uh, that this uh, Sunday in a week or two from when I'm recording this, may it be turned from a day of tragedy, from a day of sadness, to a day of happiness, to a day of redemption. May we all merit to uh, see the, re the complete redemption with the Messiah coming to redeem our souls and uh, to have uh, uh, our relationship with God once again connected in the most close way that we, can, that we can fathom and that we cannot fathom here today. Thank you very much for... Uh, for th amen, amen, amen. Th thank you, thank you uh, again, my student, uh, Breet, for, um, for being with me and helping me with this lesson. Thank you all for watching this lesson. And again, if you have any questions, please ask. And, uh, and thank you for joining us on, uh, on Tisha B'Av on uh, August, Sunday, August 17th, 2016. Shalom, shalom.